Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. I'm here at ICMA 2023, uh, and I'm here at the Ducati stand. Now, I had a few questions and a few things to look at around here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and go around the stand, try and uh, find out all the information people asked for. Now, in particular, I'm interested in seeing the new uh, Hyper Motard 698 Mono. So this is the one built around half a Panigale engine. I think there's also some new additions of the V4 Multistrada, and I'm sure there's some other, some other toys to be found. So here we go. So I'm gonna start at this back corner where we have the Street Fighter v V4S. I mean, it's an absolute monster of a thing with that uh, Olin suspension. I don't know if you can even see that little exhaust underneath it. It's so bright on this stand, I'm not sure how well that's gonna come out. Um, we have a few interesting things like a copy of the Akrapovich exhaust off the, off the Panigale. That really is uh, a work of art. So here we have a Panigale V4R. I mean, I think these things with the aero and everything on them really are just incredible machines. Um, can't see me ever having one. I'm not sure what I'd do with it if I did. So here we have the Ducati Super Sport 950S. I mean, it looks kind of like a sports bike, but with those high up grips, um, they're actually pretty comfortable to ride. I have been quite tempted by, by one of these a few times to, to use as a tourer. This one's the Super Sport S, uh, which comes with the Olin suspension. Here we have the Multistrada V4S Grand Tour. So I think this is the uh, sort of ultimate touring version of the Multistrada V4. Now, it's a big bike, but that looks just really efficient in terms of how, and really clean, I suppose, how all of that's been fitted in, you know, down the side there. You see where the engine is in there and the bash guard underneath. Um, yeah, it just, uh, even actually, you know what, those scoops under there, which I bet are just a great way of getting some air off the front wheel and rooting it up past that big block up towards the rider. This one comes with all the, all the luggage on the side as well. Um, yeah, I mean, these are incredible bikes. Uh, I did get to ride the, Enduro, ride the Enduro version on Nobbly's at the ABR Festival uh, a couple of years ago, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, the only thing that slightly put me off is that it is still chain driven. Uh, I know that chains are perfectly fine these days and they last forever, but it is just one extra thing to adjust and look after when you're on a long tour. However, maybe one day uh, one of these will find its way into my possession. So here we have the uh, Multistrada uh, V4 Pikes Peak. So this is one of the fancy paint job. Um, yeah, they, they, look, they look great. They've done a Pikes Peak in the last few versions. Okay, so over here we have the V4 Rally. There are a lot of these, aren't there? Um, so this one comes with semi knobbly tires. It's got the more sort of adventure looking metal boxes and luggage on it. Uh, it's got the uh, side engine bars. It's got the big uh, alloy uh, hand grips. I mean, the controls on it are really are quite, quite remarkable. And then that big, clear, easy to, easy to see screen. So the only thing I think that I'm missing a bit on some of these bikes is that there isn't really anywhere high up to mount a nav or something. Now, I know you can do it all from the screen and you probably shouldn't be looking at electronics while you're riding anyway but it's just something I did get used to on my BMW, so I kind of expect it from other bikes. It even has a nice little uh, phone charging uh, compartment down in and there. Now, this is a bike that uh, has been in the news quite a lot lately. This is the multi Fasada V4 RS. Um, I think this is a pretty similar engine to what's in the, in the Panigale, except they've put it in an adventure bike with those great, uh, amazing looking sports, Marchinese forged wheels, um, Ak Akrapovic exhaust. I mean, it, it yeah carbon fiber hand guards. I mean, that whole thing, that whole package. If you want an adventure bike or a sports tourer and you just want it to be absolutely bonkers, then um, yeah, here you go. Now, I see on the price thing here, it says this starts from 37,490 euros. It's at about 32, 30, 32,000 pounds. So this does not come cheap. Um, however, it's uh, probably the best of both worlds, especially if you want to carry a pillion and it absolutely looks the business, I'm sure you'll agree. Unfortunately, it's behind this little glass screen, so it's not something I can sit on, but I can certainly show it to you. So this has come through the middle. Uh, we've got some scramblers here. Uh, this is the new scrambler that came out last year. Uh, that's the, 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 both the 800 and also the 1100, uh, which is the Sport Pro version. I have one of the 2016 uh, scramblers and I love it. it. It is the icon, it's the base spec one, but I got the Termi exhaust for it. And even today when I ride it, it does bring a smile to my face. They have updated them with quite a few things. So on this night shift one, it comes with the LED signals on the back. It does come with a Termi exhaust. Coming up to the bars, it does have this sort of flat curved back bar uh, and rather a nice TFT screen. We also have, um, yeah, all the different color choices that are available for the Scrambler. So what we have here is the Ducati Super Quadro Mono. So this bike is built around half a Panigale engine. So it's a 698cc single but it's just been turned up to 11 because I think that's almost what it revs to. Uh, this is the RVE version, which uh, comes with this extra sort of racing graphics, 
It's got the Termi pipes on it. I think if you have it as the race pipe, it adds something like five horsepower. It's got a full electronics package with cornering ABS. It's got wheelie control. It's got drift control. It's got a quick shifter. Uh, all in this uh, sort of uh, super motard package. Nice LED headlamp on the front. I'm not sure how much riding would be done at night. Uh, but yeah, that really is quite an incredible looking motorcycle. I do love it. I think they're about £11,000. I guess this is also a track version looking at the tyres uh, that are on it. This here is a street version, so I'm just going to have a quick wander around and have a quick sit on it, really. Um, I did wonder if it was going to be really high being a supermotor, but actually that seat doesn't look too bad at all. So I am six foot one and I have a 32 inch inside leg. So with my feet on the ground there wearing a pair of trainers, my heels are just off the ground on both sides. Uh, the riding position is very upright as you'd expect on a bike like this, even if I'm sitting really far forward uh, on the tank. Um, very easy for me to reach the floor, so it's not a mega high seat like that. Switch gear all looks, uh, all looks pretty cool. I see it's set to uh, track mode at the moment, which is awesome. Uh, this one seems to come with uh, the hand guards and a few other bits and pieces as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's simple, right? It's a simple dash. It doesn't really need to do anything uh, in particular. Oh, we have their player ABS mode. So I think the ABS mode controls how you can actually drift it uh, in going into corners. You know, it will let you actually slide the back wheel a bit, which is just such a lovely feature. So it certainly is a popular bike. And just a few little features like the big Ducati logo on the back, those twin exhaust pipes. So there must be a one into two exhaust system that's on it. It's kind of nice. It's got Brembo brakes, front and back. Is it worth 11,000 pounds for a toy? Oh yeah, that's a bit more tricky. It's a harder question to answer. Hey, I recognize those short pegs. Um, but yeah, that will, uh, that will remain to be seen. However, I think that's a really interesting bike. It's nice to see somebody doing something that doesn't need to do 200 miles an hour, but I'm sure that will be an absolute hoot to ride. So this is the existing Hypermotard. This is the 950, same engine I think that's in the Multistrada 950. This is the RVE version with the sort of the graffiti graphics. Again, a complete beast of a bike. I mean, having a 950 twin like that, in a, uh, in a super motard is kind of nuts. This is the uh, Ducati Desert X Rally. This is the rallied up, adventured up uh, version of the very popular uh, Desert X. And I've seen loads of these around on the roads. It is kind of a middleweight, uh, but you know, if you've seen some of the promo videos, they've done an absolute sterling job of just showing just exactly what this bike can do. And yes, sometimes that's in the, the hands of somebody who you know, puts, would put us all to shame. I've not seen many regular riders doing that on one of these, but nevertheless, it's nice to see that they are making a more sort of off-road ready version of the Desert X uh, in this rally version. Again, this one's behind a glass screen, so I can't actually go and sit on that, but if I give you a quick look at the tank, you can see that sort of exposed steering damper, and then hopefully also get a look at that uh, lovely TFT dash up there. And again, it does have a nice high bar for mounting some nav equipment on if you wanted to. What we have here is another Desert X. Uh, this one is not the Rally. Uh, this is the standard one, but it does have, I think, pretty much the entire accessory kit added to it, including the side engine bars, the, the metal hand guards. It's got a different steering damper to the Rally. The metal luggage on the back, fully kitted out. I, I dread to think what well, something like this weighs with everything on it, but it does look the part. And then to finish up, um, I'm just going to come in and show you the monsters. So here we have the Monster SP, uh, dripping with carbon fiber, dripping with lots of beautiful Olin's components. Um, yeah, I think if you're after a naked bike, you really can't go wrong uh, with one of these. Um, they've been around for a while. Uh, they just keep evolving them, keep making them better. Um, oh, one thing they do have here is a Ducati e-mountain bike. This is a Power Stage RR limited edition, again with uh, Olin suspension, rental handlebars. Uh, I mean, that really does look like quite a piece of engineering. I suspect it costs as much as a fairly decent enduro bike, but if you're going to get a mountain bike and you have the money, as you know, I'd still probably buy something else, but it really does look brilliant. So here we have the Panigale V2. This one looks fairly tripped out with uh, the suspension and the underslung uh, Akrapovich exhaust. And then up at the back here, we have a couple of Dival V4s. Uh, I'm not sure they had much uh, change to these this year, uh, but they do look they do look brilliant. And to finish up, I think we will end with the Street Fighter V4 SP2, which is just the already mental bike. I mean, absolutely nuts. I mean, just even looking at all the little features on it, like the carbon fiber ducting uh, to get it through onto those Brembo brakes. Um, yeah, it's just the fit and finish on this bike and the technology and the thought that's gone into literally everything, including like the, you know, the gas tank, you know, the, the side coves are all just covered with carbon fiber. It's got that exposed clutch underneath there, also with a carbon fiber cover. All the billeted aluminium uh, looks like it's been, you know, just CNC machined. Uh, carbon fiber wheels, because why wouldn't you? You know, quick release hubs for those fast tire changes when you need it. 
some very imposing looking twin uh, Akrapovich exhausts. Um, even the back end of it, you know, if you're following that, and that's probably the view you're going to see of it, you're never going to see it from the front, um, is just amazing. And then, yeah, also a quick look at that lovely electronic Olin suspension in there. You know, just everything that could be carbon fiber is carbon fiber on this bike. Uh, and even a little bit of aero at the sides. I mean, it's one of the few bikes that will go fast enough to actually uh, take advantage of that active aero. Um, and I'll show you that dash. It's six gear, it's sort of climbing up to sort of 270 kilometers an hour. I think that's me done with Ducati for this year at Eichner 2023. One thing I didn't get to do was to sit on the Desert X Rally, which is over my shoulder. I think Ducati UK will be at Most Cycle Live in a couple of weeks. So maybe they'll have one I can sit on and try out. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting and useful. If it has, please check out my other content from Eichner and maybe I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.